Welcome back, everybody. It is John Pollock with you and very special guest here in studio with us getting set for NXT TakeOver as they will be taking over the Air Canada Centre Saturday night, November the 19th. This man, Bobby Roode, the owner of the best entrance in <laughs> professional wrestling at this time. Bobby, it's great to see you. Great to see you, too. Thanks for having me. This has got to be... Uh, I mean, working in the Air Canada Centre, for, for you personally, I mean, is this kind of one of those important nights for you? I mean, the Air Canada Centre, that's the building here in Toronto. And I mean, yeah. you're here in a high profile match on a huge stage. This has got to be one of those important ones for you. It is, it is. It's, but uh, we, in the big scheme of things, it's just, you know, it's another night at the office. You know what I mean? It's, uh, but honestly, like when you think about where I've been and where I've got to, um, you know, Obviously, growing up as a, in, in Canada, being a wrestling fan, Maple Leaf Gardens was always mm -hmm. the mecca, uh, as is you know uh, Madison Square Garden is in, in the United States for for pro wrestling and, and sports entertainment. So, obviously, the Air Canada Center is very special. Um, it's going to be one of those nights that uh, that are that are, that is going to be memorable for sure. Um, being a part of WWE, being a part of the first ever NXT show here in Canada, and of course, uh, wrestling against fellow Canadian, fellow Ontarian. Uh, Ty Dillinger too, so it's going to be a pretty special night. When did the when, when the, was the first time you two crossed paths coming up in the Ontario indie scene? Because yeah, this has got to be really special for you. It is special, but you know what? Ty and I never really crossed paths at all. I mean, we once yeah. or twice. Uh, we both kind of he started a little later than I did, but um, he stayed more so in Ontario. I kind of traveled outside of Ontario. I did most of my independent stuff. Uh, in New Brunswick and Nova Scotia and out in the, in the East Coast. So, um, but you know what? Uh, being two Canadian guys, being here in Toronto, Air Canada Centre, uh, it's going to be pretty special. Has it, it changed at all? I mean, you see so many Canadian wrestlers, and it's so much, in my opinion, more difficult for you guys because it's crossing the border, getting your name out there, and you essentially have to convince promoters that you're worth all this added right. headaches for them, you know, bringing into the States yeah. and stuff like that. Is that still the case for, for a lot of wrestlers and that, that barrier for a lot of Canadians to get to that next level that you have to go through? I mean, it's not, it's not easy, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Uh, but... I, you know, honestly, from my experiences, uh, timing is everything. And, you know, you see a lot of Canadians now. I mean, you got Kevin Owens, you got obviously Jericho's been there for a while, but Sami Zayn, you know, myself, Eric Young, um, Ty Dillinger, guys that are all Canadian guys, but are, are have made their way down to the States and have been become, you know, global names now mm -hmm. in, in the industry. So it's definitely not easy, but I think all those guys that I've mentioned have the passion and the desire to make it. So I think there's a reason why we've, we've got to where we are. Do you have it having the, this run in NXT and the reception you've received? If I were to have asked you a year ago, if WWE was not in the cards for you, would you have been happy if that it, just with your career alone, you've done quite a lot outside of the WWE, but now having gone through it and seeing at this level, was this necessary for Bobby Roode's career? I think so. Yeah. You know, um, obviously starting out in the business, you know, it's been almost 17 years for me now. Um, you know, the dream has obviously been to be a part of a WrestleMania, be a part of, you know, a, a big stage. And, um, you know, I've had an opportunity and I'm very grateful for my opportunities in the past to where I've been in the companies that I've worked for. But, you know, I, I can honestly say now that I'm in WWE, there's no better place to be. There's no bigger stage than than being in the WWE. And I'm, I'm very grateful for the opportunity. And it's been a, it's been only been five months. And if you would have asked me five months ago um, if I've had if I would have thought that I've had this much success so soon, uh, I probably would have said you're crazy, but you know things happen for a reason. And again, timing is everything. And um, you know, I've been I've been given this opportunity with this this glorious uh, song, and it just kind of evolved into this really big thing. And uh, it's been a lot of fun. It's one thing for fans to see the entrance, and it's caught on to such a huge degree. But the first time you heard that song. What was your immediate reaction to it? Do you think that this was something that could click at uh, anywhere near this level? No, <laughs> n n not at all. Because uh, originally this, that wasn't even my song. Um, so I had a different song that was that was picked out. And then before I made my debut, we they switched the song to this glorious song, and I just happened to listen to it once. And um, you know, the, the powers that be, I guess you could say, were fans of the song. And so I just said, hey, let's let's give it a whirl, you know, and. Uh, Thank God I did because it's it's been a life changer for me and 
it's really comfortable, this whole glorious thing. I mean, I, w I would never thought that I would feel so comfortable doing this, but it's just everything seems to go hand in hand with the song, with the entrance, the robes, uh, just my style, my in-ring style, everything that, that the character, I just, I've really felt my niche, uh, felt my niche, or I've found my niche mm -hmm. uh, lately, you know, as this character with the song. It's just, everything is just uh, culminated into this one big thing, and it, it's been it's been fun. Whether it was uh, your first appearance, which was an overseas show, or the first time you walked out there at Full Sail, you know, you have all these years behind you, you you've done all of this, did you still have that that question is like, how is this audience going to react to me? Was that, was that something that you contemplated? Of course, as a performer, mm -hmm. you're always going to wonder, you know, what kind of reaction you're going to get if people uh, re know you, people remember you, or, you know, known, uh, you know, what you've done in your past before you got here. All those things, you know, flash through your head. But I think the real eye opener for me was in Brooklyn. Uh -huh. uh, I take over with, you know, the entrance and, you know, being in a sold out arena 15,000 plus people singing your song and uh you know really that was my that was my debut match really in the company was was takeover so that that's a that's a huge memory for me and that was a, probably my first real eye opener that you know this is where I belong when it came to the decision to finally part ways with TNA what was the deciding factor for you? I mean, that was somewhere where you had really grown your name. It was, yeah. you know, you had become synonymous with TNA. What was behind the decision? Uh, for me, you know, I got in this business because I love it. You know, I love sports entertainment. I love pro wrestling. Um, and I had a passion for it for 17 years. And near the end of my career at TNA, uh, I just, I didn't have that passion anymore. Uh, I didn't love leaving the house. I didn't love going to work. I loved being around the guys. You know what I mean? I had that, the, the locker room was always great. Um, but I just didn't enjoy it anymore. So I just, I wanted to step away for a while and, and figure out what I wanted to do. And, you know, WWE gave me this opportunity. I flew down to WrestleMania weekend in Dallas and met with some people and had some really good conversations. And just being backstage at the TakeOver event, uh, and and watching the takeover event and just from that very first moment just getting a sniff of what it what it's like there um you know started slowly bringing back that passion and i, I really wanted to be a part of it also i've uh, been really grateful for the opportunity so it wasn't signed yet when they showed you on the takeover show no, no that was my first uh my first real meeting uh so i just they, they flew me down there had some talks and then showed me in the front row and uh like i said i was just i mean being in that arena you know sold out arena for nxt uh meeting some of the guys just watching the whole production of it just watching the professionalism backstage um just everything about it it was uh, it just felt like that's that's where i needed to be and i imagine the phone afterwards was just blowing up <laughs> I, yeah it was yeah it was a bit of a it was one of those things that people were kind of shocked and happy to kind of see and then kind of wanted my my two cents on what was going on, but I really, at the time, I wasn't really sure what was going to happen, but things worked out for the best. It's interesting that now you find yourself in, in a dressing room and you're looking across at Samoa Joe, Austin Aries, Eric Young now in there as well, and it seems that NXT ha has found something in an identity that I think TNA has always struggled for, to find that identity, and there's some very talented people in that promotion, but I think you and some of the names I just listed and others, AJ Styles, that was the heart of TNA to a lot of people. You guys were synonymous with them, and it wasn't always you guys that were the focus, and I think that you're seeing NXT now, and it's, it's reaping the, the benefits of these a very talented locker room. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's 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 a very special place to be. It really is. I mean, people describe NXT as a developmental territory, but honestly, I don't think uh, a developmental territory is capable of selling out a Barclays Center, you know, 15,000 people or or selling out an Air Canada Center or, you know, we were just in California last weekend and we sold out San Jose. We sold mm -hmm. out the Palladium in, in Hollywood in, uh, in L.A. You know, we sold that out in five minutes. It's 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 a brand. It really is. NXT is a brand, and it's a growing brand. And in my opinion, it's the hottest brand under the WWE umbrella right now. We have such a huge following, and it's just a really fun show to be a part of. And uh, guys like Joe and and Austin Aries and Eric Young are, are finally getting their opportunities to to go out there and 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 shine. As you look at, at 
what's next in your career. Is it safe to assume that, that NXT and WWE, by extension, has this added years to your career? You said like you weren't having that same motivation. Could you yeah. have foreseen maybe walking away if this hadn't come your way? I think so. You know, I don't know if I could. Uh, I mean, I think this is the only thing I'm really good at, so I don't know what else I would do. But uh, it, it's really rejuvenated me, and it, it's it, you know I feel like I'm, I'm I'm young again. I feel like I'm I'm like right in the middle of my prime. I feel like I'm I'm I've got years and years ahead of me. You know what I mean? So uh, I'm 16, almost 17 years in in the business right now, but I feel I can go 15, 16 more. To be honest with you, I just it's just I'm just having fun, you know, and and I have that passion back, and um, I, I I look forward to getting back on the road all the time and. Being a part of NXT shows and just just being a part of it all is just you know we got in, I got in this business for a reason and and everything that's going on right now with WWE and with NXT is 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 the reason why I'm in this business so I'm having fun. I do have to ask about the the photo you recently posted from a, a very old WWE broadcast where yeah. there you were as part of a, Triple H's a security team playing right. a, a police officer <laughs> yeah. on television. Yeah. Was that always a moment you remembered, or was that a photo you just someone sent you and it just brought you back to that? I mean, Both, actually. Yeah, it was. It's a moment that I remember because I've talked to it about. Because oddly enough, uh, Ken Anderson was one of the other police officers with oh, me. Oh, really? So he, of course, he ended up being uh, Mr. Kennedy in the WWE and had a successful career there. And of course. Course in, in other places as well as Mr. Anderson, but we've often joke about that, you know, uh, Ken and I for years. And then this photo came up and was sent to me by somebody I can't even remember who. Actually, it was, it was sent to me by a couple different people. Uh -huh. And then, uh, you know, Triple H and I took that uh, that picture uh, after Takeover Brooklyn, and I had the other picture in my in my phone. I was like, uh, this is a this is a pretty cool moment for me. This is like, you know. How, how how life works sometimes is really funny. So I posted it. Yeah, it was um that was in nineteen or no, ninety nine maybe two thousand WrestleMania wow. seventeen I think wow. whatever that was. So yeah, my math isn't good, but <laughs> it was a long time ago. Do you look ahead to something like Takeover and think about that reaction because you're going to be a god to these people when you walk out. <laughs> it's going to be to me one of the biggest reactions of the night, maybe the biggest. Well, I I hope. I hope you're right. I don't want to. I don't want now. I don't want to be let down. It's like, but it's it's going to be either way. I mean, it's going to be it's going to be a really cool night. You know, anytime my first experience at Takeover in Brooklyn was awesome. Um, you know, and, and taking away from that, just the, that entire experience, I know that I know that Toronto is going to be bigger. I know Toronto is going to be better. Um, I'm from the the city. I'm from the area, so I know what. The wrestling fans are like here. I know how how Jerry the King Lawler always said it's like Bizarro World, <laughs> and it really is. I mean, the wrestling fans here are uh, are some of the best anywhere in the world that I've ever performed in front of. So uh, it's going to be a glorious night, to say the least. Does it become because we had Chris Jericho on the show this week and yeah. kind of talking about the same thing that it's almost this challenge now. You're so entertaining, and you have to combat that with, with the audience. You come out to this entrance. Yeah. There's nobody that hates this entrance. Right. And then does that become the challenge for you that now you've got to get this audience against you? Well, you know, I don't think I don't really consider it a challenge. I think that any time that, you know, you, your paid audience is there and they're making noise and they're having fun and they're enjoying themselves and, and they're not thinking about the money they spent to get there and they're just enthralled with with what they're seeing. I, I don't think that's a bad thing. You mm -hmm. know, whether they whether they love me or whether they love to hate me, I don't care as long as they're making noise and having fun. Uh, we're all doing our job. My final question, I want to get an update on, in my opinion, the best non-wrestling performer of 2011 did a great series of videos with you, Tracy Kaluski. Oh, yeah. The now retired lacrosse wow. player. Tracy Kaluski, bring him up. I yeah. remember when, you, yeah. when he was on Impact with you, yeah. I thought this guy was fantastic. Yeah. And still to this day, remember his contributions. How, oh, yeah. how is he? He's great. I just talked to him this morning. Yeah, I think we're going to go to dinner tomorrow night. Will uh, he be a takeover? No, I think, well, I, I invited him, uh, but uh, he's now coaching uh, pro lacrosse, so he coaches the uh, the team out of Connecticut, so oh, I believe okay. their season starts that weekend, so he's not going to be around, but man, Tracy Kaluska, people, I mean, obviously in my hometown, I live in Peterborough, and so does he, we still live there, so 
we see each other all the time and people still talk about that that episode and in that moment and uh, it's I fun. thought he was great it's like funny. He here we are job. five years yep. later talking yep. about he it he did a great job yeah have you ever had the uh, the I mean what's kept you in Peterborough all these years I'm sure there's been the temptations to yeah. move to a more convenient spot family you mm-hmm. know and and it's just uh I'm not a big city guy you know I'm driving down here in Toronto today and I'm like freaking out because there's cars <laughs> and people everywhere it's just I'm more of a laid back uh, I wouldn't say country bumpkin but I'm more of a smaller city guy uh so you know and it's not a, it's not a hard drive for me i mean it's an hour and 10 20 minutes to the airport and then once i'm out of the city and i'm home i'm home you know i live on the water and it's just, it's peaceful so um uh, when i'm down in uh, in orlando for nxt i have a, a little apartment down there too so i get kind of get the best of both worlds well bobby uh, it was great to catch up with you once again nxt takeover happening saturday night november 19th it's bobby Roode, ty dillinger you can watch it on the wwe network and a uh, great to have you on the show thanks so much right. bobby thanks for having me